Welcome to another message from C3 Mumbai. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Starting a new series on the Bible. Uh, the reason for this series is basically I'm feeling like it's June. I'm not feeling like it's June. I know it's June. <laughs> but it's mid-year. And by about now, all of those good ideas you had about the gym and, uh, you know, your diet and how much, what time you're going to go to bed and, uh, you know, the books that you were going to finish and all of those sorts of things you've given up on trying. Okay, uh, including, okay, we've got one honest person in the room, including your goals about how much you were going to read the Bible, right? Um, and uh, I, I guess I just thought it would be timely just to do a little series on the Bible. And we're going we're gonna, to, I'm going to hopefully, if uh, there's some information you don't know already about the Bible, I'm, I'm going to hopefully bring that to you to help you understand what the Bible is all about. But really, what I'm trying to do is just put the Bible in front of you and say, okay, don't forget, you know, we've got to get back to this. We always need to get back to this. Even if, even if we've gotten out of rhythm in life um, and, uh, you know, you've gone on holidays and, or, you know, work has become crazy busy or, uh, you know, your auntie was sick and your grandma was you know, acting crazy or whatever, I don't know, whatever was happening, all of the things of life, it messes with the rhythms, doesn't it? And uh, the Bible and Bible reading and having a devotional life, that's what we call it within this faith, a devotional life where we devote ourselves to God and we read His Word and we pray. Uh, to have a successful devotional life in our personal journey with Jesus actually requires some intentionality, and it requires us to kind of really actually take steps to make sure that we have a space in our world in terms of our calendar, our time, and, and uh, to, we, have, we need to carve it out intentionally to have that there. Otherwise, it, who knows that it doesn't happen? You know, it just doesn't happen if we don't. So I just want to encourage you. I'm not here today to make anyone feel guilty for not reading their Bible. If that is how you feel right now, um, it's, it's not, it's not, the purpose of this sermon is not to make anyone feel like you haven't read your Bible, you naughty person. You should read your Bible now because that's what you're supposed to do as a Christian. If the message is that and if that's what you're hearing, please understand that is not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to make a person feel guilty. All I'm trying to do is get the blessing of God and His mercy and His joy and His peace and His love to you if you haven't already got it. Amen. Who wants that? Who wants some of that? Huh? I want some of that. Come on, give God a clap. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so I'm going to read from Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. It says this. It says that blessed is the one. Everybody say blessed. Blessed, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the, way of, in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But those who delight, but those whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on His law, day and night, well, that person, that person, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do, prospers. Whatever they do, Blessed is the one who meditates on his law day and night. Today, I'm going to be talking about meditating on the Bible. Meditating on the Bible. And this is important to understand because the Bible, you're going to learn today, was actually created to be meditated upon. That's what the Bible is actually all about. Now, you may have seen a word there that kind of threw you off a little bit, where it says, blessed is the one whose delight is in the law. You're thinking, what is the law about? Anybody? You, know, you don't have to put up your hand. You may like, what, the law, the law of the land? Thou shalt not speed down the road. 
They're, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do bribes, you know, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. No, that's not the law I'm talking about. When you talk about the law of the Bible, the author of this psalm was a guy called, who knows, David, okay? David, when he said the law, he wasn't just talking about the Ten Commandments, although that was a part of it. But who knows that the, what the Ten Commandments were a part of? Who knows? Who knows what the Ten Commandments were a part of? The Ten Command- Commandments were a part of what is called the Covenant. Everybody say covenant. covenant. Now the covenant, what the covenant is, is basically an agreement that God set in place for man to follow. It's an agreement that he said, okay, if you do these things, I will make sure that we can still have a relationship. Part of the covenant was to actually uh, go and sacrifice a lamb once a year, a unblemished, precious perfect lamb once a year on behalf of the sins of, of, of the whole nation of Israel. That was part of the law, okay? And uh, this, this law, this covenant covered basically Israel so that they could have a relationship with God. Now, this is important. Why is this important? Because oftentimes when people approach the God of even the Old Testament, which is the same God we serve now, They'll say things like, well, back then they followed the law. It was about the Ten Commandments. And now it's not about the Ten Commandments. They've misunderstood. The Ten Commandments actually are still valid. But it was never about the Ten Commandments. What it was about was about the agreement that God made with His people so that they could have a relationship with Him then. I don't know if I've confused you. Have I confused you? (laughs) Now, with Jesus... You've got to understand we are under a new covenant, a new agreement, and central to that covenant now is Jesus. He is the new lamb that was sacrificed once and for all. All of the sins of the rest of mankind was put on him. It killed him. It died. He died. But the thing is, because he died, because he was the sacrifice, it was different to anybody else or anything else being the sacrifice because he died, but he was God. So what happened? He rose again. And he said, anyone who follows me will will know the death of giving up their own life to me, but they'll also know my resurrection. So we are under a new covenant, a new law. You can clap. If you're going to clap, if someone starts clapping, it's a a thing in this church, okay? Like if someone starts clapping, you're obliged. I'm sorry. Otherwise, I just, I have a a thing about awkward clap moments where you're the only one, you know? Uh, It's the worst. And I've been that person many times. And it's like when you're in the movie and you're the only one that laughs at a, that certain part. You're like, your voice goes out and echoes. <laughs> and you're like, mm. it was awkward. I hate that. I don't want anyone to feel that way in this church. Okay, so uh, I've had many bad experiences. So, so, we, so blessed is the one who meditates on the law. When, when I say that word, you've got to think covenant, agreement, what Jesus has done, the gospel, the good news, the hope for all of man kind. Blessed is the one who meditates on his law day and night. And a part of this whole covenant, a part of the whole thing is this, the Bible. And and what you have to understand about this Bible, our Bible, if you've got a, if you've got a Bible, the Bible is this book that intersects between the spiritual and the physical. It is, a, it is the written word that is like a connection point between what is seen between, before us, what we can see, and what is not seen. So it is this book that is kind of like strange at times, is confusing. Uh, who's been confused by the Bible? Right? It's, it's sometimes it's difficult to understand. But, but look at the results. Look at the results. Even in that scripture I just read, it's, it says that the blessed is the one who meditates. They'll, they'll, have, they'll have fruit. They'll have fruit. They're going to produce something. In, it's going to produce something in their life. They're going to have energy. It says that their, their leaf will not wither. I nearly said their leaf will not wither. Their leaf will not wither. And it even says that they're going to have prosperity. And that's not just talking about the money. When you're talking about the prosperity of God, money is just one part of it. And prosperity, health, you know, love, 
family, joy. I mean, it's a pretty big word, prosperity. There's another scripture later on. It's written in Psalms, in Psalm chapter 19, verse 8. It says, it says that, um, I'm going to read it to you. It says, the precepts, it's talking about the, the, the writings, the laws, the covenant, what, what is written about God in the Bible. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving Giving, joy. anybody want joy? Yeah. Yeah. Giving joy to the, to the heart. The commands of the Lord are boring. What does it say there? The commands of the Lord are radiant. Come on. Giving light to the eyes. Giving light to the, into the eyes. So in other words, you're going to have joy and you're going to have clarity. Anybody want joy? Anybody want clarity? Let me tell you something. The Word of God is something that when you begin to get it into your world, it changes everything. It changes everything. This is not a sermon about, you know, if you haven't read your Bible, you should get back to your Bible. You need to read your Bible because that's what you do when you're a good person. The moment our walk with God Come, becomes about a performance that we have to do in order to make ourselves look God, good before God, we have missed the gospel. This book is not something that is just written that you have to do because you're a Christian. Okay? This book is a book that has life in it that God is trying to get to you. And He's written it down so that you could have it. And not just me... You know, who's seen it that, that it's like you, you get presented with, the, with the, the man, you know, he's like the expert on the, I'm the expert. I have it all and you don't know much. Who knows what I'm talking about? You know, once upon a time, they, they, they went so far with this within the church that they used to do, uh, they used to do services in Latin. When nobody spoke Latin. <laughs> Can you imagine going to church and you would go and the whole, the whole time the priest was up the front going blah, 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 blah. And, and people would be like just going because that's what you do when you're a good person. The, the church missed it. They missed it. And became this religious kind of organization that was meaningless to every person that went. They went along thinking that you had to go to church and you had to do communion and you, you know, so that you would be a good person. They missed the gospel. The gospel is Jesus was the good person. He was the one who died for us. And the Bible is all about getting everything that God has for us into our worlds so that it begins to change everything. Everything. Every, everything. But... Who knows that if you were to go from here, Sunday morning, I close the sermon now and say, okay, everybody, go home, we'll see you later. And, uh, and, 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 you, and you go, okay, now I'm really inspired about reading my Bible. You know, I'm going to start reading my Bible. I haven't read my Bible for like 10 years and uh, it's time to read my Bible. I'm going to pick it up and then you, know, you blow it off. You, you go and find it. It's, where was it again? It was in that cupboard and, and you know, and it's, it's, it's the monsoon time. You're like, it's got a little bit of mold on it. You dust it off and you're like, well, good. At least it looks old so it looks like it's used. And, you know, you dust it off and you go and you open it up and you just, you just do this. You know, who's done this before? Okay, God. I'm going to read my Bible now. I just pray that you lead me to where I need to read. You're like, okay. You shall be cast upon the rocks. Your children will die. And it's like, you're like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> God, what are you saying to me? Who knows what I'm talking about? It's funny because it's happened to you, right? Who knows? Okay? And you're like, you're reading something. You're like, what am I reading? What is the Bible about? And, and then you kind of feel like, what do you feel? You're like, oh, man. I don't know, man, I'm just, you start to feel the guilt and you're like, I've tried. And you go to pastor, your pastor, I, I tried to read the Bible. Yes, I've been reading the Bible, but yes, 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 it's amazing. But inside you're thinking, I don't understand a thing that thing is saying. <laughs> so sometimes it's, it's good. Sometimes it's like hits the mark and it really speaks into my heart. Sometimes it scares the absolute life out of me. I don't know what this book is about. Or sometimes I understand what it's saying, but sometimes it talks in this language where I'm like, what is this even, what is actually going on here? Who knows what I'm talking about? 
Yeah, we all struggle with this. Even I'll tell you something, okay? I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. Right? My, my, this is my job. So, so, like, I study the Bible, and there are still scriptures that I do not understand, even to this day. I read them, I read them, I read them, I read them, and I study them. I'm just like, I don't get it. Okay, so it's okay. It's all good. That's, see, once again, we get into this performance mentality that, that we, have to, we have to understand it. We must grasp it. Otherwise, you know, what does that say about us before God? You've missed the gospel if that is actually what your life is like. And that won't bring joy into your world. What will bring joy into your world is knowing that Jesus has made a way for you where there is no way. That's what will bring joy. And He wants to help you. He's given you the gift of the Holy Spirit who is actually helping you. The law is actually written on your heart. And, and, and it begins to, as you meditate on it, and as you get it into your world, it's going to change everything, but it takes time. So, it, you know, who knows that, 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 that the Bible, as you read it, it, it the, the, there's moments where you, there's questions that get raised, right? Who's got questions about the Bible? Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Um, who, who, who's felt guilty as they've read something, and it's almost like you've read the Bible and you're looking at this mirror of who you are. You felt that, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I, shucks, that's me, I'm that person. Or, you know, it could be in the story, in the, one of the stories of the Old Testament, David or Gideon or, you know, Samuel or Samson or one of these, one of these or Ruth or one of these people in the, in the Old Testament, and you go, man, oh, okay wow, that's me, I've done that, I've said that, I've been like that. Or it could be in the New Testament when the epistles and one of the letters that, that Paul wrote to the church in the early church when it was being formed and it's like something that Paul has written to the Corinthians, you know, in Corinth and you're like, he's saying some things, you're like, how, do, how is this in the Bible? You feel guilty, you kind of feel like you've been exposed or, or, or maybe... Who's, who knows that you've been reading, the, who's, who's been in the situation where you've been reading the Bible and it challenges your own belief systems? Who knows, uh, you're like, I don't know if I believe this, you know? Who knows why, it's okay, it's okay, you can be honest. Uh, we would be lying if, 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 if we, we be, but my point is this, okay, let me get to my point. My point is this, the Bible is designed to do that. You know that? The Bible was actually designed not to induce guilt, but it is designed to actually bring you to a place where you see who you are and who God is. And, you know, if it induces guilt, we've got to understand the gospel, that we're not saved by guilt, but we're saved by Jesus. And, but but it, it, it is actually designed to raise questions. It is, it is, it is designed to convict a person to make them aware of their sin. And it is actually also designed in a way to, to actually challenge you in what you believe as God gently brings you into a place where you have to understand what He is about. Right? It's purposely written to challenge and raise questions. So, here's the deal. If you've got questions, good if you're convicted of stuff that you're reading about, good, you're actually following the Bible. Who's feeling relieved right now? You're like, okay, I'm normal, right? If, if it's challenged your belief systems, God is up there in heaven going, okay, okay, good. Let's see how this plays out. Let's see how this works in their, in their lives. I'm going to guide them through this. I'm going to help them through this. It was purposely written to challenge and raise questions. So it's good to have questions. The, the opposite to this that I've seen for those of you who have grown up in the church world or maybe in some sort of religious system is, 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 is the shutting down of questions and the shutting down of discussion. And, and where if there is anyone that is struggling through their faith, where maybe... You know, they're, they're at some point along the scale in believing Jesus. They're like, you know, they might be minus one, but at least they're on the scale, you know? 
They're like they're just beginning. Maybe they've got a whole lot of other beliefs that, that, that are there, but they're just, there's an inkling. They're beginning to see Jesus. And then there's a person who comes into their life who has this dogmatic approach to Jesus and the Bible and who, who, is, who, who just says, you know, bang, 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 you need to do this and that and you, don't worry about the questions. Yeah, you've got questions. you just got to follow. Right? And I've seen this in the church. I grew up in this kind of environment, and I'm a little bit allergic to it as a result. Sometimes I have to watch myself because I get upset about it, because I know how destructive it is, and I know this, that the Bible was not designed for that. The Bible was actually designed to raise questions, and we as people of faith, Christians, us, you know what we have to do when there's a young Christian or a young person who is on the journey or even if it's a friend we have to love them through it and have the patience to discuss and just talk through because the Bible is actually meant for that it's actually meant for that that's why we need this community that's why we need each other it's as much about the Bible as it is about anything else because who else are you going to discuss the Bible with if you can't discuss it with the people in this room That's why we do small groups. That's why we do connect groups. That's why we meet together. That's why we do what we do. That's why you should be in a connect group if you're not. And it's okay if you're not, but you should be in one because you're going to miss out if you're not. I know for some of you, it's like logistically, family, blah, 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 work. I understand. I understand. I understand. Please don't feel guilty. But if you can be in a group and and you're not, you should get in one because, because this is the moment where you can discuss the Word of God and you'll actually be, it's a part of God's design for you to grow. You understand? Hmm. So, I got off my point. When we have this dogmatic, legalistic approach to the Bible, where you're just like, no, you must just do what it says, and there's no discussion, you've missed it. The Bible is designed for discussion. The Bible is designed for questions. Okay? The Bible is designed to challenge you. And you can't, you can't open this book. I'm telling you, you can't open this book and not get scared to death. It will scare you. Who knows what I'm talking about? You'll be like, oh, my goodness. Because it's alive. Bible, you know, it says in here that the Bible is a two-edged sword. Cuts both ways, baby. It's good and it's like also painful. You know? Who's, 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 who's ever touched a knife to see if it's sharp and learned the hard way? That is the wrong way to see if a knife is sharp. <laughs> yep, it's sharp. I'm bleeding. Okay? The Bible's like that. So, a key to actually understanding the Bible and getting the answers to those questions and getting the the answers to your conviction and, and when, your, when your belief system is challenged, the, the key to, 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 to actually walking through that well and actually going about the Bible as the way the Bible is designed with those questions and those challenges is firstly to understand what the Bible is. Okay, you've got to understand what the Bible is. And you've got to understand that the Bible is an invitation. Every challenge... Every question, every conviction is an invitation to a journey of discovery that will actually change your life. Come on, you can clap. Give God a clap. Now, the devil, he wants to get in and say, no, 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 you're the wrong person. You're this, you're that. He wants to point his finger at you. You look at you, look at you. And it's like, that is not the Bible. He's defeated. The enemy's defeated. He, he's, he's, he's gone. The Bible, you've got to firstly understand what the Bible is. And secondly, you've got to understand that the Bible is, a, is an invitation to discovery. Now, I've got a video prepared for you. And this video is from some, it's actually from a not, prof, not I always get that wrong, a not for profit organization. Um, and at the end it tells you, I can't re- remember what they're called, uh, uh, 
yeah, the Bible, what? Bible, Bible Project. The Bible Project. It's from them. Now, I want you to know we are in a, a time of binge watching, okay? We, we live in a generation where people don't, you know, when I was a kid, you used to watch TV and you used to wait for that episode to come out next week. Who knows what I'm talking about? Now it's like, <laughs> you just sit in front of the Netflix or this flix or that flix and just like zombie out for like, it was like, where, where's, where's such and such gone? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm busy <laughs> watching Game of Thrones or whatever it is that, you know, you're watching and it, we, we, you can actually binge watch all of the content, that's what I'm actually trying to say, that is on this site. It is brilliant, okay? These guys have created, there's pictures, there's drawings, there's animations. Any person of any age can get on this and watch it and it's going to help you understand what the Bible is, what it's about, how it was made, what all the decks, I mean, you could, it's like, it's like Bible college education right there all on that, on that stage, so on that, on that website. So it's, um, you can look it up. Uh, it's it's www.bibleproject.com, I think. And uh, for those of you who are on the, if you're streaming this today, you're not going to be able to see this video. But it's this particular video that I'm about to play is, uh, it's one of the episodes and it's called Jewish Meditation Literature. Now, why is it called the Jewish Meditation Literature? Because, and this is going to explain it, because the Bible is actually Jewish Meditation Literature. That's actually what it is. So let's watch this video, and then I'm going to explain a few things to you. So the Bible is a collection of books written in different literary styles, like narrative, poetry, and prose. And most of us are familiar with these kinds of literature. Hey guys, uh, due to copyright laws, we weren't sure if we could play that video or not. But if you want to just pause the, uh, the podcast right now and check out the site that this is from, it's uh, www.thebibleproject.com. It's uh, fantastic resources. There, there's a bunch of uh, videos on there that you can watch, but this one um, is, is called the uh, Jewish Meditation Literature. If you just want to search that when you're in their sort of domain, uh, you'll find it. Thanks. So this ancient Jewish writing style, they must create unique types of narrative and poetry and discourse. Yes, and we'll explore all of those literary styles starting next. So, <clears throat> that's cool, right? Uh, I know that moved really quickly through a whole lot of information. So, I'm just going to review that video for you because um, uh, I think it's important. And um, so, the different uh, literature that is in the Bible, there is poetry, uh, there is history, um, there's prophetic books. Uh, there's all sorts of there's there's all sorts of stuff that is in the Bible, and we'll talk about that some more over the next coming weeks. I'm thinking maybe we might make this series a little longer than two weeks. Um, uh, let's see, but um, because I think there is a lot where basically my heart is to see every person that comes along to this church to be a real Bible expert. I, I just want that, you know, I really want that. So 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 uh, what was that video talking about? Well, firstly, every detail that is given in the Bible matters. Okay, so when you read, like they were giving that example of the story of Adam and Eve, um, every detail in that book, in that chapter, or every detail given throughout the Bible matters. So who knows what, I, what it was talking about, where you're like, oh, how come this, and how come that, and what, why, is, why is this going on? You're meant to be asking all of those questions, but what the question that we need to begin to ask is, what is the author actually trying to communicate here? And um, sometimes when we open the Bible and we want that answer straight away, it doesn't come. Who knows what that, that's like? You're like, it doesn't come because it's meant to be that way. Like that video was communicating that it takes a lifetime. Rereading, rereading where God begins to speak to you. Because it's not just about you understanding, it's about you changing, yeah. you becoming, you being that person that God has called you to be. And it's all written there in the Bible, okay? So the ambiguity, that's a big word, the ambiguity is intentional. It's okay. So I'm here to tell you, it's all good. If you're finding, finding ambiguity in the Bible and you're like, I just don't get it, and you're looking at yourself and you're going, it's because I'm a bad person or because I'm, you know, I can't read or because I'm listestic, I mean dyslexic or whatever it is, okay? Whatever it is, it's all good. 
it takes a lifetime to understand the Bible. It's meant to be that way, right? And uh, it forces us to keep reading. That's why it's ambiguous. That's, it's actually designed to bring you back to the Bible, to continue to meditate on it day and night. Um, and then the other thing to remember with the Bible is, um, say if you uh, uh, begin to read the Bible and you come across you know, something that really confuses you and almost looks like it's contradictory to uh, whatever else that you've ever thought about, and you're like, or maybe you're thinking like it's contradictory to the Bible. You, you, the Bible has to be read in the light of the entire narrative of the Bible. You, um, here's a problem sometimes with Christians, okay? And if you're here for the first time, you're still discovering Christ, you can nudge that person next to you if they are the Christian next to you and say, this is for you. But here's the problem sometimes with Christians is they, their entire Bible life has been from preachers like myself. Um, and that's okay, but see, what I can only do in, you know, 40 minutes or 35 minutes of a sermon, which reminds me I need to look at my watch, is I can only pick a few scriptures and, and, and bring a topic out of that scripture and talk about that topic um, and uh, give you some tips to walk away with to help you live the life that God has called you to live, okay? Now, that's all good, but see, the problem comes when we begin to approach the Bible like that. We pick this, and we pick that, and we pick this thing. After a while, when we do that, we have that kind of behavior with the Bible, what happens is you've got all of these disjointed ideas about what the Bible is like, and then if someone else comes in who, who you know, has some ideas, and you're not sure where it all fits in the Bible, they may say a few things, and then all of a sudden, you've got all these disjointed beliefs about everything, because you don't know the Bible, okay? So, so the Bible is actually designed, is actually meant to be read as a whole book. Yeah, and, and what happens at the end is important because it's connected to what happens at the, at the beginning and in between. And so, so it's all good to come and listen to preaching and I'm going to always prepare good sermons for you and I'm always going to have the Word and I'm always going to have these things. But if you aren't actually beginning to pursue... Um, the reading of the Bible for yourself and becoming a self-feeder, okay? And a, and a person who grows with God in, in devotion, you're going to miss out actually a big, big, big chunk. You're actually going to miss out what the Bible is all about and what this life walking with Jesus is actually about. It is about community. And I'm here as a preacher to help you know, bring that community together and, and, and to preach and teach. But, but my job is, is what I'm doing right now, to get you back into the Word and to understand that you have to understand this thing as a whole. Okay? Who's challenged by that? I'm challenged by that. But it's all good. It's all good. You've got a lifetime. You can look at the person next to you and say, you've got a lifetime. It's okay. Okay? It's, it's meant to be for your entire life. Working this out, walking through what this Bible is about, letting the challenges sink in, being challenged by it, letting it, you know, and, and at the end of that um, video where it says there's, there's that man that's sitting there and all of a sudden brings it into modern time, where it said that the Bible actually begins to reveal to you who you are, that is actually where God wants to bring you to where you begin to see how much you need Jesus. And you begin to see how much different you are from the, 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 the you know, the, what is written there sometimes, or how, how, how challenged you are by, by great men of faith in the, in the Old Testament, or whatever it might be, or, <clears throat> you know, whatever. The, these things are there to actually grow you, and you begin to see who you are in Christ as you read the Word. And, and, and you'll get faith for stuff. You begin to, you begin, God will begin to speak through it. But, but here's some things that you need to do, okay? You can start to if you're not already doing these sorts of things. And I'm going to end on this, okay? First thing, slow down, okay? With the Bible, slow down. You're not going to read this like a Harry Potter novel. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen, okay? Okay, you can't just breeze on through this and... You're going to get caught up in the book of Numbers. You're going to be in genealogies and you're going to be, what is this all about? 
you've got to slow down. Even the genealogies, who's come across, who knows what I'm talking about, the genealogy, you know, like this person was born, beget by this person. All of that stuff is actually really meaningful. But if you don't understand that it's connected to the entire Bible, you will actually just breeze over and go, oh, that doesn't matter, whatever, what is this rubbish? You know, you know? Oh, why did I put that in there? It's really important because you actually realize that this Bible actually has, has, is, a, is, is, a, is, a, is a collection of, of literature that has been from the beginning of time right up till now. And it's all connected through blood and family. It's all connected. It's crazy. Okay? That's why all of those genealogies are there. But you have to understand. So slow down and read carefully. Take note of what's there. Begin to look at it. Look into words that stand out and stuff that doesn't make sense and the questions that are raised. And take those things seriously. Don't just breeze over them because you're like trying to get your quick fix. I'm sorry. Our walk with the Lord is not a silver bullet that's going to come in and magically fix your problems overnight. That's not how God works. God, if God was to do that, it would probably kill you all, okay? We'd probably die on the spot. Because, you know, there's issues in our world, that there's, there's comforts that we are, there's things in our world that we're drawing comfort from and this stuff. And if God was just to come in and just pull the plug on it, you'd, you'd, all the goodness of you would get sucked down with it. Do you understand? Read carefully. Slow down. Let God do His thing. What God is doing in you is going to take time. He is doing it. It's good. You know, this is the lie of our generation. I think that there is a quick fix. And I think everybody's looking for that new diet, you know, that new pill. You know, now there's this pill that's out in the West uh, that's actually getting supplied by India that apparently makes you smarter. And all, and all, of, the, all of these... Yeah, all these people are taking this thing because they want to be smarter. It's the new thing, you know, to be... It's like... There's always going to be new things. There's always going to be something new on that feed. There's always going to be something that's new, 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 like what Dina was talking about. But let me tell you something. God doesn't work like that. It, just if you want to know how God works, go and stare at a plant for a little while. Just go and look at that plant. Go and look at a fruit tree and wait for it, wait for it to bear fruit. Just wait. Takes ages, man. Takes a really long time. It's as boring as anything sometimes. You're like, well, is this thing going to produce fruit for five years, Ryan? You planted it five years ago and it's got its first little stupid one five years later. You want to know how God works? That's how He works. Now, now, sometimes He does do stuff instantaneously. Sometimes He does provide. But let me tell you something. The suddenlies of God happen slowly. The suddenlies of God happen slowly. You, you, you get into a place where you're like, I didn't realize I'd ever be in this place. And how did I, how did I get into this place? How did God do that? I'm so blessed. I, you know, and when it talks about prosperity and all of these sorts of things in the Bible, let me tell you something. It takes time to produce fruit. But as you read slowly, as you meditate, you read carefully, as you take a lifetime every day, just with the Bible, take a lifetime every day. It's going to take a lifetime. I'm not saying take the whole day and don't go to work. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm being poetic, okay? I'm poetic, poetic. Take a lifetime every day, poetic, you know. Some of you are like, Ryan said I don't have to go to work. You know, my pastor said, why aren't you here today? <laughs> Take a lifetime every day. It's all good. Just slow down. I think the third thing, so first thing, slow down, read carefully. Second thing, take a lifetime every day. Third thing, get your friends involved in your Bible reading. Get, inv get involved in a group. Uh, if you can't do that, if your life is such where you can't join up in a connect group, at least grab a friend and just say, hey, Every now and again, I just want to read the Bible with you. I want to talk through the questions I have. Just grab someone in the community. Just do it, okay? And, and, and don't be alone in the Bible, okay? The Bible is actually designed, Jewish, the whole Jewish community, they used to, that's when if you read the book of Acts, they used to go every day. 
and talk about scripture together every day. Shall we do that? You know? You know? Yeah. Right? <laughs> and the fourth thing, okay, is be intentional. Um, uh, God has, has left uh, something to you which is yours and it, it essentially makes you human, okay? And that thing is your will. That, is, that thing is, is your choice to either do what's good for you or not. He's left it up to you. And uh, one of the struggles of life will be to get ourselves into a place where we're doing what is good for us rather than what is not so good for us, okay? And the Bible, and, and you'll find, well, not just the Bible, in anything in life, you'll find that you will have to be intentional about doing what is good for you. Who knows about sleeping? Sleeping on time. Okay, everybody knows that if you want to have a good sleep, you should be in bed by about 11 o'clock at the latest. Now, some of you are like, what? No, but scientifically, that's how it is. I don't have to, you, I don't have to argue that. Uh, you can go and Google it, okay? But who knows that it takes a whole lot of intentionality to get to bed at that time. So that means, like, you can't start watching your favorite show that you know you're going to watch the second episode of at, at 10.30 when you're going to go to bed at 11 o'clock. You know? Who's been caught on that? I've been caught on that. I've been like, oh, man, at 1 o'clock, I'm like, oh, so tired the next day. I'm like, people are like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, oh, I'm just so tired. I'm so busy. It's like, <laughs> 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 okay? You have to be intentional to get to bed on time. You have to be intentional to read the Bible. You understand? The things that are good for you, you have to be intentional about. And uh, you will fail. You will be, there will be moments where you're, you just unintentionally fall into, because we're human, okay? We're fallen. We need God. But if I can just encourage you, this week, be intentional. Be intentional about the Word. Slow down. Take a lifetime every day. Read the Bible in community and be intentional. Amen? C3 Mumbai is a church in the heart of India's commercial capital where a diverse group of people brought together to worship God and to pass on the hope of salvation by grace that we freely received. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram or tweet us on our handle at C3 Mumbai. Hey, it's Ryan here. If you enjoyed this message and you live in Mumbai, we would love to meet you in person. Why don't you come along 11.30 a.m. Studio 10 at Famous Studios in Mahalakshmi.